So one of the gentlemen in the course has asked this question to explain uplink and downlink transmission mechanism in LTE. And that's a great question because if in case if you have worked on previous technologies, it's always uh, make sense to understand why are we choosing something different compared to previous technologies in LTE and uh, uplink and downlink transmission mechanism understanding makes natural sense because ultimately we are talking about wireless and in wireless one thing which is understandable or which we say specifically is everything is is in the air and anything you are doing has to go through the wireless medium so if this is your e node b and then this is the ue when data is coming to you in the downlink how is it arriving and when data is going into the uplink how it is going and what is the transmission mechanism that's what we are going to take a look here and why they have chosen specifically for lt oft ma why not something else now in the in the short description of the question in case if you are aware of OFDMA and SCFDMA procedure then the answer is okay in downlink we choose orthogonal frequency division multiplexing whereas in uplink we choose single carrier FDMA which is uh, OFDMA but before OFDMA we do discrete Fourier transform. In this diagram this diagram is given in the question already in the module and this diagram directly does not make sense if you don't have a little bit of background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain why the boxes in this diagram are there and what they are doing, so on and so forth. So first of all, uh, in, in, in one thing you need to keep in mind is, let's draw it once again, in case of downlink, we have OFDMA orthogonal frequency division multiple access is the transmission scheme which is being used whereas in case of uplink uh, what ue is using it is also using oftma orthogonal frequency division multiple access but before it does this it takes discrete fourier transform and discrete fourier transform oftma is also termed as there is another name for this which is termed as single carrier ftma that's another name for discrete fourier transform OFDMA. So you will look into the procedure, the procedures are the same, just understand if you take a DFT before you're taking an OFDMA for the subcarriers, then that becomes SCFDM and that's what is used in the in the uplink. Let me correct the spelling of OFDMA here in the downlink. Okay, now having said that, let's go and talk a little bit about the procedure, the boxes which we saw over here, what they are doing, so on and so forth. So first thing first, we need to understand in case of multiple access technologies, the reason we do multiple access in case of wireless is because multiple access schemes allow resources to be shared between different group of users. It has been there in the past, it will be there in, in wireless in future as well because multiple access techniques is one way you can share and accommodate a lot of users. So for example, in case of 1G, FTMA, Resource allocation was RF carriers and it was used in amps. In case of GSM, we have been using in 2G time slots. In case of CDMA, we are using codes. An example is UMTS. In case of OFDMA, we use subcarriers as the resource allocation and example technology is LTE. So what is a subcarrier? A subcarrier is the slight location and frequency, the way allocation takes place in LTE, the resources are allocated both in time and frequency domain. In frequency domain, you specify frequency subcarriers. In time domain, you specify symbols and those becomes the resource allocation in case of LTE. In OFDMA, we have subcarriers. Having said that, so let's talk about OFDM in LTE. So a little bit of background on OFDMA. An OFDMA signal is based on a set of orthogonal subcarriers. When I use the word orthogonal, since resources needs to be shared by allocating a subset of subcarriers to each user, and why they are orthogonal? Because they are orthogonal because when sampling one subcarrier at its peak, all other subcarriers have zero amplitude, and that's what you see in the screen as well. Okay, so when one subcarrier is at peak, others are at zero amplitude. And in order to keep this particular 
condition remain true, the equation or the condition is shown on the screen. And that's what we have been doing in all those diagrams and I will explain you. In order to maintain orthogonality in case of downlink, you have to make sure that these conditions remain true. The symbol time needs to remain greater than the delay spread and it should be less than the coherence time. Now in case if you don't uh, remember what are these symbol times or you have forgotten the symbol times, delay spread and coherence time, we will revise this or review this as we go forward into the description. So, so far OFDMA seems to be a good candidate and it has a lot of advantages. It is used for, um, it has frequency diversity. It is used for, let's say, classical technologies such as wireless uh, LAN as well. Wi-Fi and it is being used for LTE as well. There are some disadvantages that it will have issues of high power, meaning peak average to power ratio. But then on the base station side or on the downlink side, we do not have an issue when it comes to high peak average to power ratio because we, do, we are not limited on the power. There is a generator always on the base station or on the side. So that really uh, does not stop uh, when it comes to designers and uh, standard operators that yes, we will have power sources so that the, compared to the advantages OFTM provides, we don't really worry about in the downlink, although this is one of the disadvantage, high peak average to power ratio. So in uplink, it's not as suitable as compared to downlink. So having said that, as I said, this is the condition to maintain. And once we understand this condition, then you will understand the boxes which are shown in case of transmission or generation of this OF, that OFTMA signal as well, OFTMA symbol, sorry, OFTMA symbol in the downlink. In order to do that, let's go further. Uh, one thing you need to keep in mind in case if you are familiar with LTE, you already know that the subcarrier, which is specified by 3GPP in case of LTE is, is 15 kilohertz and why they have chosen 15 kilohertz because 15 kilohertz frequency subcarrier is pretty narrow and that narrow 15 kilohertz subcarrier does not experience a lot of, let's just say, frequency selective fading. It just experiences flat fading. So the example I always give is, in case if you are driving on a freeway or on a highway and then there's a traffic jam on highway and everyone is stuck and waiting, there are big trucks waiting as well on the highway, big buses and everything and you are the ones uh, driving on the highway or freeway and you are on a motorbike or a heavy bike. And then even though the traffic is jammed, you will still go through the traffic jam and reach to your destination. Why? Because you, you are very lean, your vehicle is very lean, it will not be experiencing any kind of frequency selective or meaning say the traffic jam selective fading in this case, you may have some hurdles to get through it, but you will not have a lot more difficulty. Same is the case uh, analogy for this, choosing this 15 kilohertz subcarrier frequency subcarrier in the standards. And then it also helps in terms of improving the, the symbol time as well as coherence time, which we will take a look as well. So in case if we choose a bigger bandwidth subcarrier or if they would have chosen a bigger bandwidth subcarrier, there may have been issues uh, in terms of affecting with, affecting with frequency selective fading as well, not only flat fading, which happens in this case now. So having said that, uh, this is the overall architecture in terms of transmission or the block diagram, how OFTM signal is generated in the downlink, the top diagram you see, is the one where modulation is taking place. There are three modulation schemes in LTE, QPSK, 16 qualm, and 64 qualm. Once the modulation is done, once you do modulate the signal, the resources are mapped. After mapping those resources, you will take inverse fast for your transform and then add a cyclic prefix, digital to analog conversion, mixed to RF, power amplifier, and signal is transmitted. Now, this sounds so simple, but we will go and dig deeper into this as well. Once modulation is done, then map onto resource elements. And then here is where the procedure for OFTM signal generation will take place. This is where your OFTM signal generation starts taking place. And what we are doing on the transmitting side, the inverse procedure we will do on the, on the receiving side, whatever we are doing in the transmitting side. So keep this thing in mind, the condition in order to generate and, uh, and uh, keep orthogonality maintained for an OFTM symbol is your symbol time needs to be greater than the delay spread and it should be less than the symbol. It should be less than the 
coherence time that's the that's the condition once again i'm showing you here okay so just for your for your convenience as well i have repeated the definitions on here on the screen and and it says symbol time greater than delay spread and less than the coherence time and if you are not aware symbol time is simply the inverse of your frequency subcarrier frequency in this case which is 15 kilohertz and then delay spread is actually called as the measure of the multipath richness of a channel or in order to measure it you can simply take the difference of the first com arrival component time difference between the arrival of first significant multipath component and time arrival of the last multipath component that will give you delay spread definition and coherence time is the time over which the symbol or wave will maintain its properties so that it can be predicted or it in an average it's predictable meaning the time should not expand that the uh, particular signal loses its properties of wave properties or symbol or signal properties okay so that is the condition which we need to maintain in order to maintain orthogonality so having said that what we do when it comes to OFTM signal generation we try to make sure that these conditions are satisfied and that's why on the screen this example is shown for 20 megahertz market meaning 20 megahertz in case if you are familiar with LTE then for 20 megahertz how many subcarriers do you have for 20 megahertz you have 1200 subcarriers okay meaning you have 1200 subcarriers each of 15 kilohertz and this comes from if once you are familiar with LTE because 15 kilohertz subcarriers and you can simply calculate it if you take 20 megahertz divided by 15 kilohertz you will get a number when you round it off it will turn out to be around 1200 it will come out to be number will be greater than 1200 but then after excluding the guard band periods and so on and so forth we round it off around 1200 subcarriers so first thing you do once you are getting modulated signal in order to generate a FTM symbol is you are doing serial to parallel conversion and the reason to do serial to parallel conversion is because we want to expand the symbol time remember the condition the condition is symbol time should be greater than the delay spread of the channel whenever you take serial to parallel conversion it automatically increases the symbol time of any signal that's why we are doing serial to parallel conversion for a reason and then after that what is the duration of one OFTM symbol since one subcarrier is 15 kilohertz when we take the inverse of that the symbol time is 66.67 microsecond so in 66.17 microsecond you will have how many subcarriers starting from 0 all the way up to 1199 you have 1200 subcarriers because as I said this example is for for 12 for 20 megahertz market and then you are do, taking IFFT inverse fast Fourier transform why we have zero all the way up to 2047 so each of the subcarrier in this OFDM symbol is being multiplied with basically this is the mathematical equation for IFFT but why we are choosing 1000 2048 while we have only 1200 inputs so the way IFFT or FFT algorithm works is we always take range in terms of red x2 meaning if we take 2 raised to power 4 that turns out to be 16 when you take 2 raised to power 10 you will get 1000 you you do the math you will know how much is 2 raised to power um, I will leave this part for you guys because so that you can and similarly when you do 2 raised to power 11 so in this case what you are seeing here is what do you get when you do 2 raised to power 10 what do you get when you do 2 raised to power 11 you will see for 2 raised to power 10 you get a number which is less than 1200 okay when you do 2 raised to power 11 you get a number which is greater than 1200 now in case of FFT or IFFT what we do is we go with in order to implement that FFT IFFT, IFFT algorithm we go with red x power 2 because that's easier to implement so when you will go for 2 raised to power 11 you will get a number which is greater than 1200 but you will go with that specific outcome the reason being is because in that case it's easier to implement so you will get around 2048 so you will use 1200 inputs and the remaining inputs which are not being used you will be padding them by zero so that's why where the 2047 
or 2048 0 to 2047 which is 2048 comes in so now you applied that IFFT algorithm all you got was you did applied IFFT you have your OFTM symbol generated which has 2048 symbols sorry 2048 samples in one OFTM symbol duration and similarly it's happening for each OFTM symbol you are having those many subcarriers then what should be the sampling frequency the sampling frequency in this case should be since each symbol duration is 66.7 microsecond total you have 2048 of these uh, inputs which are coming in so sampling frequency will be 30.72 megahertz now this sampling frequency is good because it's greater than 20 megahertz we have an input of 20 megahertz so we will not be worried that some of them will be uh, under sample because you need to have a greater than 20 megahertz so that is the sampling frequency at which it's, it is being sampled then you do iq modulation at a certain frequency and then after inserting cyclic prefix and i will talk about cyclic prefix insertion uh, after this discussion when then you are after that modulating signal at a certain frequency you are going to transmit it in the air as analog signal so that is your IFFT sig sim signal generation now how this box fits into the actual picture which you saw earlier for the transmission or what is shown uh, a lot of times in the downlink transmission scheme in order to see this picture how does this fit into that specific uh, all big block diagram let me take a look and show you here so you can take a look here this is the enhanced version of the OFDM transmission side of the house in case if you take a look this is the same thing which is shown what I explained in detail here you have your OFDM signal generation you are doing serial to parallel parallel conversion you are applying IFFT these are zero padding which is being done which I explained already depending on whatever is your chip size or chip, uh, whatever is the 2 raised to power R red X red x2 you are using if you are using for 15 megahertz if you are using it for 10 megahertz 5 megahertz so on and so forth and once you have done this once your ifft has been implemented then you will insert a cyclic prefix and after that you will transmit the signal towards the transmitting side and on the receiving end you will do the opposite what you did in this case the the correction which needs to be done here is it will be fft it will not be ifft so that's a correction which needs to be made this is fast Fourier transform not inverse fast Fourier transform you will do parallel to see that conversion and after you will demodulate okay so that's the and that's the idea for the case of transmission side now talking about sampling here you saw a look we, we did take a look at the sampling in this case and the sampling size which you see specifically here is shown as 30.7 megahertz this is again a similar picture where you have the transmitting side and then you have the receiving side which is shown as well this is low noise amplifier this is where your OFTM generation started this is the transmitting side and then this one is the receiving side so looking at this sampling table why i have checked these boxes and highlighted with red specifically here is because sampling rate and fast Fourier transform size as a function of channel bandwidth in case of your umts or 3g people who have worked with 3g the reason 2048 was chosen specifically in case of 20 megahertz is because 2048 or 2048 is a multiple of 3.84 and what is 3.84 3.84 is the rate which is used for umts so 3.84 is the rate which is used for umts signal processing or it is used for 3g signal processing as well so even though you can calculate the rate the way i did in the previous screen but similarly you can calculate it based on a umts rates you can um, you can use this as a multiple of 3.84 megahertz as well which allows us to reuse the rates used for umts signal processing similarly over here similarly over here this is two times the multiple of that and that's why uh, we are specifically 
using it because so that in that case you can have it comparable to umts because in 3g it's already being used and that's what is shown how many samples will be coming in within the body of the symbol and then once you have these you can also see if fft size is available for that particular uh, samples or not and in this case you can see all of the samples are available as well in this particular table so that should give you an idea sampling rate and what fast Fourier transform sizes as a function of the channel bandwidth are being used so just elaboration this 3.84 where this is coming from this is just the UMTS uh, sampling rate which is being used in, UMT in 3G signal processing okay so on the receiving end what we will do we will do the opposite what we did in the transmitting end but then once your transmission or OFTM signal generation procedure is completed after OFTM you will project or you are going to generate your signal and distribute it on the air interface which is shown symbolically here in this diagram and translation of receive signal and resource resource elements using fast Fourier transform you are going to send those or you are going to basically what it says superimpose onto the air interface at different time and frequency resources so one of the resources time one of the resources frequency so you can simply say this this is time resource of your air interface and this is the frequency resource and in each symbol you have 1200 subcarriers which will be representing frequency resources so then you can for each symbol you can spread it in each symbol so this is representing each symbol and how many subcarriers will be there you can if in case if you have 20 megahertz 10 megahertz it will start from let's say this subcarrier 0 subcarrier 1 subcarrier 2 3 4 all the way up starting from 0 all the way up to 1199 so that's how transmission is going through receiving signal in this case so in this case in uplink scenario what you see is the procedure is the same in this case the procedure is the same in this case this procedure can be considered equal to OFTM the only thing you are doing additional here let's use a different color this is similar to OFTM the only procedure you are doing differently here is you are taking a DFT here before discrete Fourier transform. So rest of the procedure is the same only when you take a discrete Fourier transform for a fixed set of subcarriers then in that case including that it becomes single carrier frequency division multiple access or it's also termed as DFT based OFTMA. And the advantage of taking discrete Fourier transform here is that it reduces peak average to power ratio or PAPR. On the uplink sides, UEs or your handheld devices do not have enough power that they can transmit signal in the uplink because peak average to power ratio, your power amplifier will do a back off because of high PAPR. OFTM has a disadvantage of high PAPR. So in order to offset that disadvantage for your UEs, or your mobile devices amplifier we use discrete Fourier transform before that so that it can result in low PAPR in the uplink side for the same signal generation and similarly for another UE let's say if this is being done for UE number one and then for UE number two we are going to use a different set of subcarrier frequencies and then take DF discrete Fourier transform do the same thing which is done for OFTM and keeping these specific set of single carrier frequencies for each user that maintains the single carrier properties in the uplink as well so ue1 has one set of subcarriers the other one has different set of subcarriers so signal will be generated in the uplink in the same way only thing is it will have low papr and it will maintain single carrier properties as well the uplink so having said that on the in case uh, in the downlink when the ofdm signal is generated how it is received on the receiving end by the UE, UE is going to do whatever was done on the sending side. UE is going to remove the cyclic prefix first of all, which you see over here after the signal is received and then do serial to parallel conversion. And then if at the transmitting side, IFFT was done at the receiving side, we will do fast Fourier transform or FFT, which you can see over here. Rest of the procedure is the same. Now, 
Keep this thing in mind. Don't do not confuse this procedure with the uplink transmission procedure. Uplink transmission procedure is this. This is done when U is the one transmitting in the uplink. And this procedure, which you see over here, this is when U E is receiving OFDM symbol uh, symbols in the downlink. So, for example, when U E is receiving in the downlink. And this is the procedure it will do internally to receive the data. This procedure is shown. This procedure. Okay. So that's shown. Now, if you still have questions about cyclic prefix and why it's used, so the reason to add cyclic prefix is because we want to maintain orthogonality for OFDM symbol. So adding the cyclic prefix will avoid any kind of dispersion in the channel, meaning when you add cyclic prefix it basically maintains the properties much more meaning the symbol time increases because you are adding a cyclic prefix and what is a cyclic prefix you take the copy of the symbol and add it at front so overall your symbol duration will increase and as you know the condition to maintain orthogonality is your symbol time needs to be greater than the delay spread less than the coherence time so adding the cyclic prefix at the start of the channel it improves the robustness in time dispersive channels and also it will avoid any kind of spectrum efficiency loss as well. And this is always done at the OFDM signal transmission. We will add cyclic prefix. Otherwise the advantages will not be as much because the signal will be suffering from a lot of delay spread when it is going through different multi path rate channels. So for, for 15 kilohertz subcarrier in one symbol out of total duration, we know that one subcarrier is 15 kilohertz that has a duration of 6.6 .6 microsecond so the actual symbol duration in case of lt or ofdm symbol duration in case of lt is not 66.7 microsecond it is 66.7 plus 4.7 microsecond okay so total will turn out to be 66.7 plus 4.7 around 71 microsecond that is the total symbol duration because you have to add this cyclic prefix length as well that will determine the total symbol duration now in case if your signal has to travel through longer distances meaning in case of a rural area where you are transmitting the signal on uh, uh, through your LT base station so that it can reach different users in a rural area then you don't use normal cyclic prefix you use extended cyclic prefix an extended cyclic prefix simply says rather than adding just 4.7 microseconds duration of the symbol, we add 16.7 microseconds. So then you can only have six symbols per slot. And then your overall symbol duration will increase. What that will do is when your signal or symbol is traveling through longer distances, it will avoid any kind of dispersion because of multipath while it is traveling longer distances. And in case of multimedia broadcast multicast channels or MPMS scenarios, you even have an option for 7.5 kilohertz subcarrier. This is not for regular scenarios, but when you have even narrower subcarriers like 7.5 kilohertz subcarrier, then you have a cyclic prefix length of 33.3 .3 microsecond. And then you will only have three symbols per slot. Now, remember this, you uh, depending on it's a trade off as you are increasing your uh, as you are increasing your cyclic prefix length the number of symbols you will have per slot are continuously decreasing what this means is that your capacity of overall air interface capacity keeps on decreasing as you try to keep on protecting your sim uh, signal because of dispersion and multipath propagation effects but then that's a trade-off we have to do for extended cyclic prefix you see the number of symbols are much more lesser and lesser so that's another example of how a cyclic prefix is generated. You take last portion of the signal and then add it at front and that is termed as cyclic prefix. Usually for normal scenarios, it is 4.7 microseconds, which is added. And what I already explained, you can take a look over here. The calculations are done. If this is your actual OFTM symbol, which is generated, even with each OFTM symbol, which is generated, there is actually cyclic prefix which is being added and you can see how much of cyclic prefix the screen portion is the cyclic prefix which is being added this one is for normal case this one is for extended case this one is for extended case with 7.5 kilohertz subcarriers so what i already mentioned uh, it's explained in the tabular form as well depending on how long your signal has to travel 
if you are using a cyclic prefix duration so let me uh, elaborate here this is cp duration duration of cyclic prefix so if the duration of cyclic prefix is 0.42 microsecond then it can travel all the way up to 1.6 kilometers that's the equivalent distance in case if you uh, have a cyclic prefix of 4. Point microseconds added onto the actual OFTM symbol, then the duration it can travel or equivalent distance is 1.4 kilometers. If you increase that to 16.7 microseconds, the equivalent duration is 5 kilometers. If you increase it further, 33.3 microseconds, the equivalent duration is 10 kilometers. Now it doesn't come for free. There is a trade-off. The cost is your overhead keeps on increasing, meaning your overhead in your air interface out of the total resources you are using in this case 7% of your resources meaning out of your total number of OFDM symbols this much percentage you are using for the overhead because of cyclic prefix it will not be carrying any data or signaling information just for protection this case 7.8 and in this case you see this one is 25% in both cases because here we are 15 kilohertz here we are 7.5 kilohertz okay so that's the idea what's the trade-off with cyclic prefix lens in case of downlink for lte now cyclic prefix can be another topic in addition to uh, ofdm symbol generation the reason i covered along with uh, ofdm symbol generation is because ofdm symbol generation is not complete until we know what cyclic prefix is and why it is being used so that's why i decided to cover both of them together